one of the most common test tubes that's in a biology or chemistry lab is the 16 by 100 millimeter test tube. They come in glass, in polypropylene, polystyrene, depending upon the manufacturer and what the chemist or biologist wants to do. Our goal here is to create a glass test tube and to put water as a sample and actually model both the glass test tube and our liquid. So to begin with, we have a cylinder, but in our design, I'm going to double click on the cylinder and I'm going to change a few dimensions. We have 100 millimeters, so that's okay, but the diameter needs to be 16 millimeters. I'm going to double click on the diameter dimension 20 and enter 16 and then say rebuild. The millimeter units is selected because that is the default of my document template and then I will say OK. Let's say you wanted to deal just in inches. There are 25.4 millimeters to one inch. If I select on four inches, I'm going to be pretty close. Notice that SolidWorks, if I put the units of four inches in, SolidWorks will calculate for me that that is 101.6 millimeters. If I double click on that and return it back to 100, I get the result, what I'm looking for, as close to the actual glass test tube that I want to model. Let's take a look at adding the bowl of the test tube on the bottom. That rounded face happens for a lot of different reasons. Samples are collected at the bottom of the test tube. The, ge the geometry allows sediment to collect at the bottom. Sometimes you want to aspirate at different areas along the test tube and you don't want to disturb the sample that's at the bottom. So we need to create a rounded bottom for our test tube. I'm going to select on this edge and use the fillet feature. Click on feature, click on fillet. The fillet that I'm looking for, I'm going to try a radius. I know my diameter is 16. I'm going to use a fillet radius of 8 so that I get a nice rounded end and again the radius is half the diameter. So whatever test tube I use, I can use the fillet feature to round off the bottom as long as I use that the radius is half the diameter. Unfortunately, this test tube, I can't put anything in it because it's solid. So I need to hollow out all the material in the inside. That feature is called the shell feature. I'll click on the top face and click on shell. Now, what wall thickness do you use? Well, that depends on the material of your tube. Some glass tubes, like disposable glassware, has a wall thickness of 0.65 to 0.75 millimeters. You also get into the plastic disposable tubes and those wall thicknesses can vary whether or not the material is polypropylene or polystyrene. For our example, let's just try one millimeter. It's a good first guess and click OK. Now the test tube has been hollowed. Currently our material is aluminum, but that doesn't make much sense when our test tube is going to be made out of glass. So I'm going to right click on the aluminum alloy, select on edit material, and from my list come all the way down to the bottom and select on other non-metals. Glass is one of the options. So I will click on glass and say OK. Glass has been modified and displayed in the feature manager. It also has given me a transparency. Now when I calculate surface area of the outside of the glass or the inside of the glass, the geometry here becomes a little bit more complicated if I was going to use theoretical formulas. So for this case, I will use 
mass properties. Mass properties provides me the density of the glass, the mass of the glass tube, the volume, which is the amount of glass, not the volume inside the tube, and the surface area. The volume that you would require to measure the water inside the tube has to be modeled somewhat differently. Let's display an isometric view, fit the model to the graphics window, and save the file as 16 by 100 millimeter test tube.